pre-order your copy of Football Game Plan's latest book project, The Go-Go Offense by Brennan Marion. Now, Coach Marion is the offensive coordinator at William & Mary and takes you through the ins and outs of the most explosive offense that's lighting up the college football fields and school boards in the process. You can pre-order your copy at footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Now, the release of The Go-Go Offense book is August 25th. Welcome to Football Game Plan, where football makes sense. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Mike McCarthy is your producer today. It's the summertime, and preseason is just around the corner in the NFL, and we'll get you ready for the upcoming 2019 NFL season as we preview the Washington Redskins. Now, as we kick off the season preview, let us take a look at some of the key storylines heading into the season as we go into our four-minute offense. In the nation's capital, the quarterback room is a mess. Both Alex Smith and Colt McCord both have broken legs. Case Keenum definitely isn't the answer. So first round draft pick Dwayne Haskins will stake his claim as the Redskins starting quarterback for this year in training camp. Having already impressed VP of player personnel Doug Williams, I'm expecting him to be the starter for week one. The Redskins defense ranked 17th overall in 2018. While they did rack up 62.5 sacks last season, the Skins also drafted Montez Sweat in the first round last season to help further bolster that pass rush. In three years at Mississippi State, Sweat tallied 23 and a half sacks and 30 tackles for losses, so he could be a great addition to the defense across from pro bowler Ryan Kerrigan. Eric Flowers has been a turnstile thus far in his career. In three years with the Giants, he had 29 penalties in his 46 starts and was cut from the team following the 2017 season. 2018 didn't turn out well for him in Jacksonville either, as he only started seven games. He'll be looking to get his career back on track and live up to his first round pick status with the Redskins here in 2019. The wide receiver position in Washington is amongst the weakest position groups in the NFL. The core of Josh Doxson, Paul Richardson, and Terry McLaurin doesn't exactly strike fear into NFL defenses. Former NFL center Trevor Maddich believes that there's reason for optimism, though, and that that receiver group doesn't need any re reinforcements. We'll see about that this upcoming season. It's time to put this team under the microscope and go position by position to see where they stand as we head into the 2019 season. And we'll start on the offensive side of the ball at the quarterback position. The Washington Redskins landed their quarterback of the future in Dwayne Haskins, and in my opinion, he's the best QB prospect they've had since RG3 was winning Rookie of the Year and leading the Redskins to the playoffs in 2012. Haskins has all of the physical and mental traits to be the next great QB in D.C. I also like the depth that they've created here with Colt McCoy and Case Keenum. One could even argue that it would be wise for them to start either one of these two guys to begin the season under center. But I'm of the logical thought process that you always play the best players, period, and Haskins is the best player at the position for Washington. They are also pretty well stocked in the backfield as well with Adrian Peterson, Darius Geis, Chris Thompson, Samaj P. Ryan, and rookie Bryce Love. They may even have the most talented backfield in the division by a collection. However, what keeps them from actually claiming that title is both health and consistency. Geis, Thompson, and Love have either been injured or are returning from injury, and P. Ryan had a case of fumbleitis last season, which got him into the doghouse. Now, if all guys are healthy, that makes it easier for Haskins or any one of these quarterbacks, for that matter, to do their job effectively. Also, keep an eye on undrafted rookie free agent Craig Reynolds out of Kutztown. He's a guy that's a lot like Thompson and has good value as a returner. Many are down on the Redskins receiving core, but I happen to think that there is a lot of talent at this position. Deep speed isn't a question with Josh Doxson, Paul Richardson, and rookie Terry McLaurin out of Ohio State. And they also have some strong possession guys as well in Brian Quick and Trey Quinn, as well as rookie Kelvin Harmon out of NC State. So it's a pick your poison situation for opposing defenses on game day. The question is about consistency. Game in, game out. Can this core show up and stay healthy throughout the season? Especially if the plan is to start a rookie quarterback, they'll need all the reps they can get to develop that chemistry and cohesiveness to thrive. But this is still a very talented group that's able to win at all levels of the field, so I'm excited to see how these guys get out there and compete this season. I also feel as though the Skins have three solid options at tight end as well, and Jordan Reed, Vernon Davis, and Jeremy Sprinkle. At some point, Father Time will eventually catch up with Davis, and Reed just has to elude the injury bug to reach his full potential as a pro. Keep an eye on Sprinkle this year. He's a solid blocker and a very underrated receiver. 
Up front along the offensive line, the Redskins really need to patch things up with Trent Williams and get him into the fold immediately. He's one of the better tackles in the game, and you don't want your rookie quarterback to begin his career without one of his best offensive linemen. Now, the rest of the linemen are pretty solid. They are strong from center to, to the right tackle spot, and the jury is set out on left tackle Eric Flowers. The Skins hope that the move inside will be better for him, but without Williams in the mix, they may have to turn to Flowers to be a left tackle and count on one of many rookies to step in that guard. They drafted Wes Martin and Ross Pierce Parker this past April, and their number may even be called earlier than expected, or they may lean on last year's third round pick, Jaron Christian, out of Louisville to step in and fill that void. And here's a look at how I graded the offensive side of the ball for the Washington Redskins. Defensively for the Redskins, I think they have more than enough here to be a top five defense this season. We'll start up front as they boast tremendous talent and depth led by Jonathan Allen, Matt Ioannidis, and Deron Payne. Former Virginia Tech Hokie Tim Seto gives them another solid rotational piece up front, and it will be interesting to see if the light ever comes on for Caleb Brantley. He was super talented coming out of Florida, but never really regained that same spark in the NFL. As far as edge rushers are concerned, the Skins have a great one in Ryan Kerrigan. He's one of the more underrated rushers in the game and one of the league's most consistent, showing a knack for making a big play at the key points in ball games. He'll be joined by rookie Montez Sweat, who is one of the top pass rushers in the NFL draft, who was excellent for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. He's a versatile athlete that's able to pressure the quarterback, but also drop back in coverage and hold his own. The staff would like to see growth this year from third-year player Ryan Anderson, who hasn't quite made the impact as expected. With the injury to Reuben Foster doing OTAs, the Skins now have a big-time question mark on the inside, so they went out and signed John Bostic, who last played with the Pittsburgh Steelers last season, to step in and start in the middle next to Mason Foster, so we'll see how that turns out. In my opinion, that just leaves the door open for rookie Cole Holcomb out of North Carolina and second-year player Sean Deion Hamilton as well to come in there and see either a lot of playing time or jockey for a starting spot. Keep an eye on B.J. Blunt, an undrafted rookie free agent out of McNeese State. He has blistering speed and explosiveness and could thrive on special teams before finding his way in the rotation. The secondary brings about as much excitement as the defensive front does. In free agency, the Skins went out and signed Landon Collins from the New York Giants to come in and start at strong safety. They also drafted a ball-hawking slot corner in Jimmy Moreland out of James Madison and were able to get Dominic Rogers Cromartie to come out of retirement to serve in a multitude of roles on the back end. Those new additions paired with Josh Norman, Greg Stroman, and Fabian Moreau gives Washington a potentially playmaking secondary this upcoming year. And second year player Danny Johnson out of Southern and Jeremy Reeves out of South Alabama are very talented players who earned time last year in the secondary. So it'll be key to see how they also incorporate Adonis Alexander into the mix as they spent the supplemental pick on him last year. He's a 6'3 corner out of Virginia Tech that has very good press skills. And here's a look at how I graded the defensive side of the ball for the Washington Redskins. With the addition of rookie quarterback Dwayne Haskins, the Washington Redskins now have the ability to attack all levels of the field in the past game, especially deep down the field. I'm going to show you how they can run a switch route, try to get a big play deep down the field, and try to create a familiar matchup, a familiar connection with Terry McLaurin, the rookie wide receiver out of Ohio State, and his teammate Dwayne Haskins. But here's what we're talking about. You got a lot of speed now. Terry McLaurin, we're going to put him right here in the slot offset. We're going to also put Paul Richardson, who is a deep threat that you really got to take it. You really got to take into account his speed and defenses will definitely key on that. Josh Doxson back by his side on, on his long term on the opposite side. We're going to put him in a the pistol. Therefore, you can reverse out, fake the handoff here, drop straight back off play action. We're going to have the tight end check, block, release out in the flat. Back is going to work his way up and just settle over the center in between the linebacker and the offensive line just in case you have two outlet passes but we're going to have Doxson run the takeoff route here again we're trying to work touchdown to check down now that we have an arm in Dwayne Haskins that can get the football deep down the field switch route we're talking about he's going to replace one here he's going to work out and down the rail he's going to work in and to the post and we know how well Paul Richardson does running away from traffic we know how well these two Haskins and McLaurin connected on plays like this deep down the field, one in particular in the Big Ten Championship game against Northwestern. So now that the Redskins have the ability to get deep down the field in the passing game, 
it's going to unlock their entire offense. And that's why adding Dwayne Haskins, along with these receivers that they have on the roster, with a healthy running game coming back, the Washington Redskins offense could be scary in 2019. I love what the Washington Redskins have on defense. And when you add a guy like Montez Sweat to your pass rushing or your, your front seven, you're going to be very good defensively in conjunction with what you already have in Jonathan Allen, Matt Ioannidis, Deron Payne, and also Ryan Kerrigan, who's one of the more underrated defensive edge rushers in the NFL. But here's what the pressure can do for a, a defense or against an opposing offense. Again, just very good front seven, in my opinion. Washington with, again, Ryan Kerrigan. We're going to talk about Payne. We're going to talk about, I'm sorry, Ioannidis, Payne, and Allen. So you have a lot of beef, a lot of explosiveness up front. And you have the rookie Montez Sweat. And one way they can create pressure, utilizing their personnel. We're going to put Ioannidis on the outside. Contain rush here. We're going to bring Kerrigan crashing over right there in the B gap. We want to try to create that double team. We're going to have Deron Payne push right through the center. And he's going to pick his side whether or not he wants to go strong side or weak side A gap. We're going to bring in uh, Jonathan up on a contain rush. And we're going to crash Sweat inside here. The reason why we like crashing these two defensive ends because their length and length can clog up passing windows. It causes all kinds of problems. It also creates double teams. Now, whichever side of the back decides to go, let's say he goes to the right, it's that backer's responsibility. This backer is now free to blitz. If he goes this way, it's his responsibility, and now he's free to blitz. So you're gonna get pressure, but I just like the potential here with the Redskins, with Montez Sweat, and also Ryan Kerrigan with that, with all that beef up front, even if they wanna stand him up as an outside back or take away a back and then put another defensive lineman here like uh, Tim Sutter out of, out of uh, Virginia Tech. They have a ton of options, a ton of talent, and they're gonna cause a ton of problems to opposing offenses this upcoming season. It is the Washington team. Quarterback, we talked about the best player on the roster is Dwayne Haskins, but he's not starting enough games. You can't justify drafting him unless you're in a dynasty league or a keeper league. Uh, and what I mean by keeper league is late keeper league, because you're not, unless you're in dynasty league, you're not drafting Dwayne Haskins. Darius Geis, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, he got that infection, I believe, last year after the surgery. Uh, so we don't know how he's going to come back. But if he comes back, any semblance of Darius Geis, Yikes. Adrian Peterson. Dude's ageless. He's the new he's the new Jim Brown out here. And I do not mean that with any disrespect to Jim Brown, what he did back in the time. I mean a dude who just for some reason you don't even know how old he is because of how he runs. He's still running hard. The receiving core is gonna be an interesting one because I think it's a flip core. What I mean by that is the list of number one guys, Josh Doxon. I think he'll be a non-factor. Paul Richardson's number two. I think there's a good chance where he can be as high as the number one receiver or number four. Trey Quinn is going to be the guy who takes over Jamison Crowder's role. I think that he can be the number three guy or the number three guy. And then Terry McLaurin, I think, has the opportunity. That's why I say it's a flip. Right now, he's listed at probably the fourth or fifth receiver. Because of the connection he has with Dwayne Haskins when they get him on the field, late in the season, he could be their number one receiver. It's just how those things go. Jordan Reed is the most frustrating tight end in the entire NFL because he is super talented, super injured all the time. So if you can get him in the 15th or 16th round, great, because it means he's your backup tight end. Let's see if he can make it. You know, he might catch some good matchups or fill in for your tight end when there is a bye. Troy Anthony here, bringing you the best bets for the Washington Redskins. Right now, week one spread has the Redskins getting plus nine at the Eagles. That can be had at minus 110. That's a lot of points for a divisional game, and it's probably gonna go down closer to the start of the season. I also like Haskins' Offensive Rookie of the Year odds. He's at plus 600. Over the past few years, we've seen more and more rookie quarterbacks come in, take jobs, and put up good numbers. Haskins looked like the real deal at Ohio State, and I think he might win the job at some point during the season for the Redskins. That's all for now. I'm Troy Anthony. Follow me on Twitter, at Football Fandom, replacing the O's with zeros. I'm David Hasagan, and this is Huddle Up with Hasagan, where we're going to have some quick fire takes for the Washington Redskins 
Starting with this year's breakout candidate, Emery, who's the guy you're looking at this year? I think tight end Jeremy Sprinkle is ready for a breakout season. Uh, we know they have Jordan Reed, they have Vernon Davis, but Sprinkle quietly played some really good ball last year. I like them coming out of Arkansas. I think this year um, with this new offense, uh, not new offense, but new quarterback and, and his emergence and the inconsistency of Jordan Reed. And, and we don't know if Vernon Davis is going to fall off a cliff age wise because he's right. still out there looking like Ben Watson as far as yep. youth is concerned. So I think Sprinkle is ready. Defensively, Adonis Alexander, cornerback out of Virginia Tech, 6'3, 206, was a supplemental pick last year. So this year, full fledged training camp, he's in, he's, he's in the mix, he's ready to go. I think he has a chance to really stand out being that long corner that has good press skills. Two first round picks for the Skins in the first round this year. Are they the impact rookies to watch? Absolutely. I think when you look at the Wayne Haskins and, and what he brings to the table, give me them a guy that can attack touchdown to check down. He can work deep down the field. He has the, the accuracy, the acumen, everything that you want to see from a quarterback. He has it. Your entire playbook is open. And I think that's just going to open up the offense. And defensively, to be able to get Montez Sweat to team up with Ryan Kerrigan, along with Jonathan Allen, along yep. with Deron Payne, along with Tim Settle, along with Matt <laughs> Ioannidis, that front seven is bananas. So yep. their defense is going to be uh, fantastic. I was about to curse on camera, but, <laughs> but they're going to be awesome. Montez Sweat is going to have a really, really good season. Who are the X-Factors for the Skins and what's going to be a very competitive division this year? I think you have to look at Darius Geis as an X-Factor. Yeah. You know, this, we hadn't seen him play. We saw him play in the preseason and right. got hurt on a really good run. Can right. he regain that form? And, you know, how will they, you know, divvy up the carries now with him and uh, Adrian Peterson? So that's going to be something we're going to have to watch. Defensively, without Ruben Foster, you have to look at John Bostic. They had to go grab him off free agency and stick him in there as a starter. He's going to have to play well. If he's going to be, if this defense is really going to be what I think it can be, Bostic is going to have to really fill the void left by Ruben Foster. Tough shoes to fill, yeah. but Bostic is a veteran. And considering he has all the help around him from the front line and those edge rushers, he's going to really have to step up and play big time. Who are the surprises out of camp in Washington this year? I think wide receiver Cam Sims, uh, undrafted okay. rookie free agent out of Kansas. Really short, quick game breaker that can catch the football, you know, short and outlet and take it a distance. He's a, a threat. He's kind of like what they lost in Jameson Crowder. So I see he would be a guy to keep an eye on. And Jeremy Reeves likes him out of South Alabama. He was with the Philadelphia Eagles as a rookie, bounced around a little bit, found himself in Washington last year, late last year and played pretty well. So I think when you look at Reeves, who's still making that transition to safety, he could play corner or safety. He's a physical guy, he has ball skills. Now he's a little bit more acclimated to playing safety. I think he has a chance to, to shine this year. Reasons for optimism, reasons for concern for Washington. This team was one game away from the playoffs. Yeah. You know, had they beaten Tennessee in week 16, then they would have been on their way to the playoffs because the game against the Eagles would have mattered and they would have you know done well, but they would have had themselves in position to make the playoffs. They lost that game because they had Josh Johnson as, as a quarterback. They just pulled off the street. Yeah. So now you have a team that was, you know, on the cusp of the playoffs, very good defense, quarterback that's already better than what they had on the roster. A lot of optimism. Concern, the offensive line. If Trent Williams doesn't play for the Redskins this year, like he said, he says the relationship is, is you know, it, it can't be repaired. If that happens, that's a significant blow the left tackle, especially if you plan on starting a rookie quarterback. You want that person to be in 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 play and right there lockstep with, with your rookie QB. So Trent Williams has to play and on defense if they have a fall off in the secondary. But Josh Norman is is you know the guy, the, the landmark guy that you look on the roster and you're like, okay, that's the starting cornerback. If he doesn't have the success, he's gonna, you know, that could really push guys up that are probably not ready for that starting role. So I would say Offensive line could be a potential problem. And you're going to have your natural rookie growing pains, but in the secondary, if a guy like Josh Norman doesn't have a bounce back season, it could be an issue. Emory Hunt, the czar, the playbook here, and joining me now is fellow football game plan analyst Troy Anthony for this Four Downs with the Czar segment, continuing our preview of the Washington Redskins as we take a look at the road to the Super Bowl for the Redskins. And it has to start with their first round pick. Dwayne Haskins. If he is the truth, this team, people forget, one game away from the playoffs last year and had to go with Josh Johnson into that Week 17 game against Tennessee to win and get in. You add a healthy offensive line, two good backs in the backfield, along with a Chris Thompson. Right now he's healthy. Yeah. 
you have Jordan Reed, you have all these weapons on the, on the outside and, and as far as receivers and tight ends, you get consistent play from the quarterback position, good play from the quarterback position, a better player in Haskins who's better than Alex Smith, he's better than Colt McCoy, he's better than uh, Case Keenum, he's better than Josh Johnson who they had last year. If Haskins is the truth, if what we saw last year from him at Ohio State is what we're going to see from him this season as a rookie, bumps included, with the Redskins, this team can go far. Now, if Haskins is the truth, I'm going to need a lot more from their skill positions. Just because Jordan Reed hasn't been healthy in how many years? I need him to stay healthy for that Redskins offense to produce. They have a plethora of running backs now. They have Chris Thompson, Adrian Peterson. They just drafted Bryce Love. They have Geis coming back from his knee injury. There's talent all around him, but I need them to produce and I need them to be healthy there for Haskins to produce. They have a couple of uh, young wide receivers now that Haskins can work with. I just need them there for him to develop and be the truth. They talk about Terry McLaurin, his teammate at Ohio, Ohio State. State. You also look at Kelvin Harmon, who did mm -hmm. great things in the ACC at NC State, and they still have some really good options out there as well on the perimeter. Josh Doxson being one of them from TCU. Also, Paul uh, Richardson uh, as well, yeah, another nice athletic, real good season. I think all of this is for not at their offensive line is without Trent Williams. Yeah. That's a big piece to the puzzle. And their offensive line was good last year. They have one of the better offensive lines, I think, in the division. And when you look at now an offensive line that's potentially without Trent Williams, and you know who the backup is to perhaps that position, uh, new former New York Giant, you know, they, they ran out of town. So <laughs> we won't say his name, but let's just say like that right there is not, a, not what you want for a rookie quarterback. But let's say Trent Williams doesn't play. Okay, they built depth last year because they dealt with injuries. But that offensive line is a different offensive line with Williams. If Williams can't play or doesn't want to play for the Redskins, and if they can't get someone to step in there and be at least comparable, not better than Williams because you can't because he's a really good player, all pro type talent, then that offensive line is going to struggle, which means the passing game is going to struggle, which means they're going to become one dimensional, trying to lean on the running game. And that is not what you want if you're, if you're Washington. You built this offense for explosiveness. Trent Williams needs to be a Redskin, in my opinion, in order for this team to go to the Super Bowl. In order for this team to go to Super Bowl, I think that defense needs to take a huge leap. Over the past few seasons, it's been talked about how they're, they're, they're slowly gaining more traction. They're getting better and better. When's it gonna happen? You have Ryan Kerrigan still. They signed uh, Foster last, uh, they signed Foster in the offseason. Unfortunately, he tore his ACL, but they drafted Montez Sweat. There's a whole bunch of talent in that front seven. Oh, they also got Landon Collins now in that secondary with Josh Norman on the outside. They have ballers all around. It's time for that defense to step up and take them over the hump and be a premier defense in the NFC. You talk about Jonathan Allen up front along the defensive line. You also talk about uh, Tim Settle from Virginia Tech on that defensive line. There's a bunch of beef up front. You talk about in the back end, Jimmy Moreland out of Jim, uh, James Madison tore up OTAs, he tore up the East-West Shrine game, tore up the CAA, all he does is catch interceptions. I swear, you think he plays receiver, which how many times he has the ball in his hands. You also look at a guy they brought in last year, undrafted free agent from the FCS level, and Danny Johnson, who was one of my top three slot corners in the draft. Jimmy Moreland was one of my top three slot corners. Ball skills, can you score, can you take the ball over? If they can start turning the ball over in the secondary, Redskins might be something to deal with this year in the NFC East. I have the Redskins finishing third in the NFC East. This is a dangerous team and one of my sleepers this year in the NFL. If the offense can get up to speed right away with that offensive line being a slight question mark heading into the season, I have no problems about their defense. It's all about the offense. Again, if they can get up to speed and balance out this football team, this is a very dangerous bunch. They have a quarterback now. They have two tailbacks, a host of receivers, and what I think will be a very good defense. This is a team to watch. Moving forward, they may not get there this year, but next year and years after that, they'll be a formidable foe in the NFC East. For this season preview, I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of our social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to Football Game Plan Podcast on iTunes, where you can find our NFL All 32 podcasts, our fantasy football starting lineup, as well as our scout team podcast and leave us a five-star rating. Also, subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com 
slash football game plan. Finally, every Thursday and Friday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, be sure to check out the football game plan show on the Game Plus Network. Check with your cable provider for channel listings.